What's up everyone? John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo here and this is my eighth time filming this intro. I'm hoping it's the charm. We are given a full review of Sony Ericsson's new flagship smartphone, the Xperia Arc, that we saw make its debut at CES 2011. Let's go ahead, take a look, and see if it lives up to that flagship name. Coming up with new ways to say does it live up to is getting harder and harder. Alright, so let's run through the specs very quickly of this extremely thin smartphone. It's got an odd size 4.2 inch diagonal screen, the resolution of 480 by 854. It's running Sony's new mobile Bravia engine, which we'll talk about at length. It's one of the few phones out now that's got Android 2.3 gingerbread. It's got Sony's proprietary Timescape UI, so you're going to get some new widgets and have your information arranged in a hierarchy type order. I'm not the biggest fan, we've talked about it though at length. On the back, Ghana has a fairly common 8 megapixel camera with some very uncommon features that we'll also talk about. Flash and autofocus are here. It can record 720p video at 30 frames per second. It's got a 1 gigahertz Scorpion processor in it with a 1500 milliamp hour battery. All right, specs are specs. How does they actually come together in a full package? Let's talk first about call quality of the Xperia Arc. You can probably see by that arc shape where it gets its name from. Much like its friend that shares a lot of specs with it, the Xperia Play, call quality was just about average. This is nothing to write home about. You're not gonna think, wow, this is the best call I ever made, things sound awesome, but you're not gonna think, eh, it sounds really crappy, I can't hear anything. It's just good enough that you're not gonna notice that it's bad, if that makes sense. It's average phone calls. I didn't have many drop calls. I did do my 20 call tests, uh, and I had three, so just about average. And I was using AT&T's 3G network. Uh, I should mention that this guy is available unlocked, and thank you to the folks at clove.co.uk for sending this over. And if you wanna take a look and get one for yourself, link will be down below to pick one of these bad boys up. So call quality is average, speakerphone is average. I didn't have any of the Bluetooth connection issues though that I had with the Xperia Play. So something to keep in mind. All right, so we mentioned during the overview that it's got Sony's mobile Bravia engine. What does that mean? In the world of QHD and AMOLED and Super AMOLED Plus and Super AMOLED Double Extra Super Plus, screen resolution and screen quality is all the rage. And this is Sony Ericsson's sort of foray into those high quality screens. And I gotta say, this is one of the best implementations that I've seen. Images look absolutely gorgeous. So I've got an image here in the gallery. Go ahead and zoom in. Colors pop, blacks are very, very black. Pretty decent visibility in direct sunlight as well. And you don't get that sort of haze on white areas that you have with other screens. Uh, I'm looking at you. Uh, original AMOLED, Super AMOLED Plus doesn't have it that bad. Uh, screen is just absolutely beautiful. When you're looking at text, so if I jump on over to the web, for example, and we take a look at a site, perhaps like Techno Buffalo, assuming I can select the icon, there we go. Uh, you can see the whites actually look pretty white. They don't have that tint that I mentioned earlier. The screen here is really, really very pretty. Um, so we're on sort of Twitter feed. You can see that it does look very nice. We'll go ahead and exit out of that. There we go. Now you can actually look at the website. Text is going to be very crisp and very clear. You're going to have no problem reading text on this. I wouldn't necessarily read an ebook, although you could because it's Android and there's a ton of ebook options. But it looks very, very, very nice and very solid. All right, so it's called the ARC, the A-R-C, and everybody made funny jokes that Noah should have reviewed this phone, and then you could have said it was Noah's ARC. And honestly, if I thought about that, we probably would have had Noah review it because those jokes would just be funny and awesome. Uh, so it is called the ARC because of its arced shape. And the arc shape makes this phone feel really nice in the hands. Right where you hold it in the middle, it is extremely thin, and it tapers out on both sides. This is one of the most enjoyable phones to hold. I know that sounds very weird, but holding some of the chunkier phones feels a little bit strange. It just feels very, very nice, and it's extremely thin. Uh, if you look at it, for example, if we make a little smartphone sandwich, next something like the Xperia Play, which of course has that slide-out keyboard, is going to add some thickness, you can really appreciate how thin this phone really is. If you look at something like the Droid Charge, again, you can really see how thin this is. And just because I know you Android folks want to see it, 
here it is next to the iPhone 4, which at one point was the smallest or thinnest smartphone out there, and now the Xperia are just absolutely dorset. This thing is just so very, very thin. Uh, so for as good as the design is, Sony made some weird uh, design cues. So if you saw my review of the Xperia Play, I talked about the strange button uh, alignment here on the bottom and how they're a bit out of order for what we've seen on previous Android smartphones. Well, evidently Sony decided to take that a little bit further and got rid of some buttons here on the Xperia Arc. So if you go ahead and take a look at a traditional Android phone, so we bring in the charge here, you've got your menu button, your home button, your back button, uh, and your search button. Here you've just got a back button, a home button, and a menu button. A little bit weird. If you wanted to get your search on, you gotta go ahead and do it with a soft button, because unfortunately, we're missing that fourth one right there. Uh, this is running Gingerbread, which has a really, really awesome application management system built right in, and generally in stock Gingerbread to access that, all you gotta do is hit the menu button, and you can access it right there. However, Sony decided to make things simpler, I guess, and get rid of that option. So if you want to access that, you got to make a shortcut to it on your home screen or access it directly from your apps. I found that to be very, very annoying. Alright, so I don't generally talk about cameras in my reviews because usually they're all varying degrees of suck. They snap pictures, you can take a shot at your dog or your friends out at a club, but you're not going to blow them up and chances are it's not going to replace your primary uh, camera. However, the Xperia R comes very close to camera quality and features. Let me go ahead and show you. So we'll jump into camera. We don't have a hard button for, uh, for camera. You've got your typical Android looking camera options. However, what you've got is that little guy smiling at you. And this is the smile detection. Actually what this will do is when you have somebody in frame, so if I had a face right there and I was going to smile, as soon as I smiled it would snap the picture. So if you take photos of kids and you're trying to get them to sit still, uh, this is a really nice feature. Something to uh, keep in mind that I really liked with the Xperia Arc. This is not something that's offered in all of Sony Ericsson's uh, phones. Alright, so let's talk about speed for all of you processor junkies and benchmarking junkies. Uh, it received a Quadrant score of 1,361. Uh, so it certainly wasn't setting the world on fire with its Quadrant speed. Uh, it was okay, it was actually lower than the Xperia Play, which came in at 1,392. But all those numbers don't mean much if the phone is going to work well for you. Uh, and this phone is pretty snappy. Uh, one of the areas where I generally notice slowness is in the browser. So if we look at Techno Buffalo, which does have flash content, here you can see how slow that was to actually load up the browser. It's not overly quick, there's a little bit of lag. With flash turned off though, it's pretty zippy. Uh, but if you look at some of the dual core phones, that's really where you see a difference. And this is just a single core. Uh, which generally I don't say is the biggest deal, but when you're looking at flash content and you're doing very processor intensive things, having that extra core really does come into handy. So this is by no means a slow phone at all, but it does exist in the world of other phones out there when dual core is becoming a standard, whether you're dealing with Nvidia's Tegra 2 or whether or not you're dealing with dual core Snapdragons. Uh, this just doesn't have it. So while it's excellent for today's uh, standards and specs, if you're looking to sign a two-year contract that says offer on your carrier, or you're looking to spend the several hundred dollars it's going to cost to get this thing unlocked, chances are you're not going to be buying a phone or another phone in the next year or so, and you want to get something that's going to be future-proof, and you just don't have that option here, unfortunately. Um, so do I recommend this phone? Absolutely. For right now, it is a solidly specced phone in a gorgeous package, but it's not future-proof. So you don't have support for full HSPA+, you don't have LTE, you're not going to have that dual core, which is probably going to become standard uh, in the next year or so. So you're going to get a phone that's going to work great now, and developers have certainly been making tons of applications, but it's not going to be optimized for the dual core phones that will be coming out. Uh, inevitably in the next few months. So if you're in the market for a phone that's going to work well, is going to give you relatively decent speed, and looks damn good while doing it, uh, the Xperia Arc is going to be a very solid phone. However, if you're one of the few that needs to have the latest and greatest technology, uh, this is by no means a future-proof uh, phone, and you might be better off waiting for the Arc 2 uh, which presumably will have dual core or another Sony Ericsson phone, which will sport uh, two cores. Uh, so guys, hope you enjoyed. 
curious what you think about the Xperia Arc, whether or not it's for you. I am John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.